In the meantime, we've heard before that agriculture is the cornerstone of the African economy and it's crucial for African governments to step up their investment in the sector if hunger, food insecurity and poverty are to be eliminated in line with the continent's Millennium Development Goals. Joining us now to outline the issue and to put it in the spotlight is NAPAD advisor on agriculture, Professor Richard Mkandawire. Thanks so much, Richard, for joining us uh, this afternoon. Well, NAPAD's to hold its uh, sixth partnership platform meeting of the Comprehensive Africa Agriculture Development Program, and it's being expected to place a lot of emphasis on increased investment within the agricultural space. What's the status of things as it stands now compared to where we need to be? Well, I think it's important that we appreciate that this is actually a decade of hope for Africa. In spite of the financial meltdown and aspiring food prices, uh, there's been considerable uh, increased investment moving into the agriculture sector by national governments and into the international community, particularly if you look at uh, the post Alaquila G8 summit, there was commitment of close to 22 billion mm -hmm. towards uh, addressing the challenges of uh, agriculture growth as well as uh, food security. And in our engagement with the international community, there are all indications that uh, the bulk of those resources yeah. will be earmarked on Africa. And within the context, of course, an African defined agenda, which is the Comprehensive Africa Agriculture Development Program. Mm -hmm. And we believe this is unprecedented in the history of uh, agriculture development in Africa, yeah. where the international community is beginning to listen to African voices and is beginning to respond to African priorities. Just to reiterate African government's positions on this and the need for them to step up their investment in the sector, they're cognizant then of the importance of this uh, because when we look at headlines, you know, it's always these screaming headlines that you hear about investment being directed towards infrastructure particularly and the perception out there is that there's a somewhat of a lopsided approach to the way we're tackling the various sectors that are key to achieving Millennium Development Goals. Oh, of course, I mean, infrastructure has to go hand in hand with, uh, you know, investment in the agriculture sector. Uh, we are talking about rural infrastructure, which is very central uh, to boosting agriculture productivity and ensuring that uh, small producers have access uh, to markets uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, appropriate storage facilities are made available uh, for the rural communities. And particularly now, uh, with uh, increased uh, uh, small water farmers moving into uh, being linked to markets yeah. uh, in the area of hot, hot culture production, uh, you know, through contract farming arrangements in places such as uh, uh, Kenya, uh, in places such as Mali, Senegal, where increasingly uh, small farmers are beginning now to find their, uh, you know, commodities, mm -hmm. finding their way into markets in Europe. Yeah. Um, this is a very important development. Well, we've got food security being seen as a very important poverty eradicator, but this is in a context where we still have the food versus fuel debate very much alive. Uh, so how do we ensure that the investments are being made for the right reasons? No, no, no. Well, no, no question at all. I, I think, again, the, 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 the two should not be contradictory. I mean, fuel is important, mm -hmm. and there's increasing, I think, move towards our, our focus on biofuel. Uh, with uh, you know crops such as jatropha being grown in vast quantities in various uh, countries across uh, uh, the continent, uh, but clearly one need to be very careful that uh, it does not replace uh, food production, yeah. uh, and therefore I think a very careful feasibility studies are important uh, to ensure that uh, this does not jeopardize uh, increased uh, you know food production. To what extent does it make a difference that CAADP was conceived and led by Africans rather than being imposed from outside of the continent? Well, this is the whole point, that uh, this is actually an unprecedented development that, uh, you know, CADAP uh, was conceived and is driven by Africa. Mm -hmm. If you look at, uh, you know, development interventions in the continent in the past, they tended to be laid by outsiders. They were parachuted from the headquarters of the World Bank. They were parachuted from the development agencies. But this is the most single uh, African-made uh, intervention crafted in Africa and driven by Africans. Yeah. This is why it has received such a, you know, applaud, uh, uh, you know, praise from the international community. In fact, there are attempts now to replicate a similar framework in other continents because it is unique and it's actually, you know, making things work. Well, Richard, on that note, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time. Of course, uh, enough emphasis being placed at this stage on the agricultural sector. We'll be tracking developments there as they unfold. Thank